All right, in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to make a blinking, color flashing, sound making game. It's really simple if you're using Eclipse, so let's get started. Click on File, New, and Project. Then select Android Project. We'll call our game Color Pattern Game. And leave everything else the same. Then we'll, we'll select our which APIs we're going to use. If you really need to use the newest APIs, then that's one you'll go with. Otherwise, I like to go with Android 2.1 since a lot of phones still run on 2.1, and so that will make sure that your app will work on as many different phones as possible. Click Next here. Um, we'll call our application name, which is the, the name of the app that you'll see. We'll call it Color Pattern Game. I'll put spaces in there. You might want to call it something smaller so that it shows up better on the phone, but for our purposes, this is fine. Next, for your package name, you need to pick something that's unique because it cannot collide with any other name in the Play Marketplace. I'll call mine com.brokenairplane.colorpatterngame. Since I own the Broken Airplane domain, I know no one else will have it. And then I can leave everything else the same and click Finish. So uh, what I like about Eclipse is it sets everything up for you without you having to worry about all the, uh, the nitty-gritty details and you can just get into making the app. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the layout. So you're going to click on Res, which is for resources, and then you'll click on Layout and Main. And it gives you a nice little template here, which we don't need it to say Hello World Color Pattern Activity, although if you run that app, click on the, high, the highest folder, and then click Run As. It's a good idea to use the emulator as well, just so that you can build incrementally and see if everything's turning out the way you want it to. So going back to the main XML, uh, we're going to work with the layout here. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to delete this text view, so we don't need that anymore. As you can see here, it takes it away. And we're going to make a button. You can drag over a button from here if you'd like. That's one option. I'm just going to make it from scratch so you see everything be made in real time. So type button, Android ID equals, the great thing about Eclipse is that it will start to suggest things for you and make it uh, save you some typing and maybe even help you remember some things. So app plus ID, I'll get to what that means in a second, and I'm going to call it button. Next, I want that button to have a layout width where it fills the parent, the parent meaning the parent layout screen up here, and then I'm going to make its height equal to fill, fill parent as well. So we've got a button here, and then I'm going to close that. So now we've completed the button markup here. We've, we've written it out. We've got a button, and if we look over here on the graphical layout, we see all gray, because what we've done is we've sent, we've um, made the button cover the entire screen. So we don't need that. So we're going to add actually some some more buttons. We're going to add two buttons. We're also going to add some things so that uh, the button doesn't take up the whole screen. Just like you see a linear layout here, linear means just what you think it means, a line. Um, this one is vertical, which means it's going to go through the whole screen. So that's our main linear layout. I'm going to add a linear layout below that. I do want it to fill the parent for the width. That means I want it to go from one end of the screen to the other. I want the layout height to wrap the content, which means whatever I'm putting in there, that's as far as I want it to go. And then I'm going to put Android Gravity Center Horizontal Android Orientation Horizontal. So what this is saying is that we have this main linear layout here that's going to go that's going to cover all the layout of the app over the screen. Then we have a linear layout under that that's going to cover the horizontal, which is from here to here. And so our button will fall under that. And I want to put in a second button. Since we're making different colors here, I'll make this the R for red button, and I'll make this one the G button. And then once again, Android layout width equals wrap content. And then I'm going to do something now. Since I have these two buttons, I'm going to change the height, actually the height and the width, 
to 100 dp. Rather than filling up the whole parent, which is that vertical filling up the whole screen, I'm going to make it 100 of each. And then I'm going to add one more thing to each button. Weight equals 1.0. And what that's saying, and I'm going to copy that over to this one as well, what that's saying is that um, I want the buttons to share the screen. And so, um, let's see, I'm going to close that linear layout. So now I have the main linear layout, which covers this whole vertical. I have a linear layout that's only covering the horizontal, this one line. And I have it centered around the horizontal. And I have these two buttons, the R button and the G button, of a size 100 dp, width and height, and then a weight of 1. So let's see what that looks like. Good, that looks like what I want. And so I'm going to send it over. Looks like I've got an error. So I was missing a, forgot to close my linear layout bra bracket. So now I'll save that. Okay, good, all my errors are gone. Now I can upload this to the phone. And uh, something to mention is that even though it does right now, even though um, what the, the phone emulator is showing us looks like this, um, when your apps get a little bit more complicated, you'll notice that this is just kind of a, a guide or helpful. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's what it's going to look like when it goes to the phone. And also the emulator does not always ex uh, look exactly like what it will on the phone. So just something to keep in mind. So we have our two buttons, um, but I want four. So I'm going to add another linear layout, and I can just copy and paste all this. So this is going to cover that one line. I'm going to have something below that line. So this is covering that, that row of buttons. This will be a new row of buttons. And instead of R button, I'll call this the B for blue button. And I'll call this, instead of G, the Y for uh, yellow button. I'm going to upload that to the phone now. You should often check with your phone to make sure everything uh, looks like you want it to. You don't want to just plot along and then have all these errors at the end. You want to keep going, or you want to um, send it over the phone as often as possible so you can make sure that it looks exactly like you want it to uh, before you get too complicated. Now, um, one more thing is that I don't want these buttons up here. I want them to be more in the center. So I'm going to go up to the main, I'm going to add gravity, and I'm going to make that in the center. So now you see that they're in the center. Send it over to the phone. Great, that's how I want it. Now, this was all formatting just to get the buttons the way we want them to be. We need to put some logic into these buttons so they'll actually do something, because if you see here on the emulator, even though they are buttons, I can click on them, they don't do anything. So that's not very exciting. So we've got uh, the layout the way we want it to. We're gonna go, we're gonna close the resources folder and go into the source folder. Like I said, Eclipse is great about giving you all the uh, setup that you need. So there's going to be three things that we're going to do um, to make this app work the way we want it to. This app's going to have some uh, blinking buttons and some sounds. And uh, to do that, we need to make these buttons work. So to make the buttons work, we're going to do three things. We're going to declare the button in the code. We're going to connect the coded button to the XML button we just mentioned. Because um, the XML over here doesn't know anything about the Java code over here. So they're two separate things. They don't know anything about each other, so we have to tell them that they are connected. And then the third thing is we're going to find out if the user has pushed a button using what's called a listener. So if that sounds like a lot, don't worry. It's actually pretty simple. We'll go through it right now. So the first thing we're going to do is declare those buttons. And I'm going to type protected button red button. Now you'll notice that there's an error here right now. I'm going to leave that alone for just a moment. I'll actually save some time here and just copy and paste. You want to be careful when you're copying and pasting that you you actually change the variables. I'm going to change that to the green button. Copying and pasting can be wonderful, but it can also lead to errors that you didn't expect. So just be very careful. Okay, so now I've declared my four variables. Uh, I've got red I've got a red button button, a green button button, a blue button button, and a yellow button button. That was just fun to say. And so now if I hover over button where I had the error. It's not that it's an actual error, it's just that um, there's this code. In Java there's a lot of code um, that's already reserved. And when I say Java, by the way, I mean Android. Um, but 
there's a lot of code that's already made for you that you don't even have to do. You don't have to tell Android what a button is. It knows what a button is. And so we just need to bring that code in there. So I've typed everything in as if it knew what it was doing. Now I'm just going to import that code. And I just, all I did to get to that message was just to hover over the red line. And then it says, oh, there's an error. Well, there's some quick fixes. And these quick fixes won't always fix it, but often they will. And, and it's really wonderful to have that. So Eclipse is awesome for developing Android apps. So I'm going to click Import Button and those errors go away and what that did now is in addition to the other things it imported all the code that it knows it imported the button widget now remember back here in the XML when we um, declared these buttons as app plus ID basically saying new variable or new type of button R button G button well now we're going to connect that in the code here's where we declared them said hey we're gonna use these by the way I should mention that this is um, our entire app is gonna live in this class um, don't worry if you don't know what that means I'm just telling you that this is our big um, container right here so now I'm going to go into the on create and I'm going to say red button which is the variable I declared up here, is a button, and you can find it by its ID in r dot id dot and it auto completed for me r button. Now this is um, Android coding does require semicolons at the end of the statement, so make sure you do that. Now I'm going to copy and paste this once again, so that I have all my buttons there. And then I'm going to change this to green button and change that over here to G button. You will get an error if uh, you make any typos here, so make sure that you don't. Yellow button. And there we go. We're not getting any errors, so everything's good so far. The third thing is that we mentioned earlier is we're going to need a listener. It's going to say, hey, I just pushed a button. We need to do something with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say red button dot set on touch. And these um, um, all these suggestions are really great for when you're trying to figure out what to do or, you know, if you're trying to remember what, what the name of that thing is, you know, and you don't want to Google for it. Um, this is really helpful because it not only tells you what they're called, but it also tells you what it does. Now there's two different options here. There's the set on click listener and the set on touch listener. We're actually going to use the touch listener and the reason for that is because um, we want to not only do something when the button's pushed, but also when the button is released. And I'll show you that in a second. And then this. So then green button. And I'm just going to copy and paste everything from there on. Blue button. Set on touch listener. And you see some errors popping up. We'll handle those in a second. So we've got all those. I'm going to hover over the error. None of these are actually the option that we want, um, except for this last one. So don't always assume that the first one is what you want. The first option is not always the right option. So unfortunately, you do have to know what you're doing here. I'll help you out with that. But we want to let color pattern game activity implement non-touch listener. So that's basically saying our, our giant container here is implementing the on-touch listener. OK, so now we're getting a new error because this um, our activity is saying, OK, I'll implement the on-touch listener, but we need an on touch method. So I'm going to add that in there. I'm going to delete this extra dot there. So now this is our on touch. So now it's our job to tell it what to do when there's an on touch. So this override, see over here, this override is saying, okay, we're going to override what it would normally do if there's an on touch because right now you see it's not doing anything on the phone. So we're going to change that. This is this is why we're using on touch as opposed to on click because we don't want to just get what happens when you push the button we also want to get what happens when you release the button we're going to add a switch which is basically allowing us to have these two options here and the first option is going to be um, this motion event if you're ever making a game this is a really useful thing you've got all these different options here for you know up down shift you know just lots of different good things for high speed um, actions but we're going to use down. So if action is down, if V equals red button, and what's V? Well, V is this view V right here, and you can change the variable if you want, but it's basically saying when um, something is pushed, when the button is pushed, it sends a message um, to the view, to the view methods, and since we're overriding what it would normally do, we're going to capture it and say, hey, if you're pushing the red button, do this. 
and if you're pushing the blue button, do this. So now we'll say else if you're pushing the green button, do this. And I know we're not putting anything in there yet. We will. Else if view returned is the yellow button, and so else if v is the blue button, then do that. Okay, so we've got that. We're now going to have a break statement, just to break out of that. Add another case, another motion event case. Um, remember, we're not just worried about what happens when we push the button down, but also what happens when we push the button, or when we release the button. So action up. And so now we have the same thing, we can just copy and paste. So if the action's down, do this. If we do the action up, or if, if we release the button, do this. Realize I made an error here and made all my equal signs um, just assignment. We want equality. We want to see if it actually is equal to. So that's why I was getting all those errors. Now it's happy. So now we've done all three things that we wanted to do. We've, we've declared the buttons up here in the code. We've connected them to their XML counterparts. We have gave it a listener, an on-touch listener and we've implemented the method down here. Um, the problem is we won't have anything in the onTouch, so it's not doing anything. But everything's going smoothly. Everything's exactly the way we want it to. Now, we won't want these old gray buttons here. We want some color in there. So I'm going to add some RGB values, some, some color to these buttons. I got those RGB values just from a website. So I'm going to go back up here to my onCreate because I want the app to, when it creates the app, to make those buttons not gray, but a certain color. So I'm going to say red button, set background color to color.rgb. RGB just means red, green, blue. The different integer values that you put in here will determine what color it is. So that's why I was saying you'll want to find what values you want because you can, can really make any color you want. And so now when the app starts, I've set that background color to this, this RGB value. Copy and paste that a couple more times. Change this to green button blue button and yellow button. And now I want to change these RGB values so that this is 0 for green. This is 139 RGB, so red should be 0, green should be 0, but blue should have a value. And then yellow is just a mixture of these two colors of red and green. So now when I upload this, we've done a lot of coding and we're going to see it pay off in just a moment. Upload that to the phone we see that our buttons now have these nice pretty colors. They still don't, they don't do anything. They don't even highlight now because we, we set the background color, so we've overrid all that. But now we have these nice pretty colors. We're gonna go to the action down. When the button is pushed, we want, I'm gonna copy this whole line of code here and put it in here. Um, when the red button is pushed, I want it to be an even brighter red. I want it to look even brighter so that it looks like it's pushed. And so then I'm gonna change the green one and by the way, uh, I should mention that if you got errors up here about the color, you might just need to import something. It looks like it automatically did it up here for me. I'm not sure why. You might need this. If you got that error, just import the color. Um, let's see here. We're back at blue, so everything's good there. And we're going to change the blue now to 255. And our yellow button. Okay, so now remember we've overridden what um, usually happens with the button pushed. Um, when they push down this button, now we want it to go from these um, slightly darker colors to brighter versions of those colors. Okay, here's our app. Now we haven't pushed anything, we click on it, and yay, they all work, they get brighter. Um, problem is though, when I let go, when I stop pushing it, it doesn't go back because we haven't done anything with the action up. So this is easy though because um, we wanted to go back to the original color so all you have to do is copy and paste what we set it to originally. Copy it there, just make sure you put them in the right spot otherwise you'll get some really interesting behavior. Okay, run it again. Now it should not only change colors when we click on it but also change back to what it was. Perfect. Okay, you could stop there and be happy, but I'm going to go one more step with this. And I'd like when I push those buttons for it to make a sound. What 
I'm going to do is I've already created some MP3s that have names like A, C, E, and G um, just for different note names. I used Audacity, some free software to make those tones. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on back on our uh, resources folder. I'm going to make a new folder called raw. What I'll do is I'll take my my AMP3 and put it in there and I'm gonna copy it in there. I don't want to link to it because then uh, if that original file was ever deleted it would be gone. I've got a MP3 called C. I'm gonna put that in there as well. These are just note names that I'm putting into this raw folder. And finally G. And you can, you can of course, have any MP3 that you want in there. You can call it anything you want. Just make sure that it's a lowercase. Okay, um, so one more quick step, and we will have some sound in this. Um, so I want, when I push the button down, I want there to be a sound that comes from it, a very specific sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in Media Player, So I'm saying it's a type of media player. It, uh, the type is media player, which is um, plays the music. This is the variable I'm creating, media player. You can call it anything you want. Create this. So in this instance, um, I want you to call r dot raw dot. Uh, let's say c because I made that because I made that the lowest C and so um, that will now um, go in just like up here where we connected the um, the buttons in our XML file to our variables we've now connected the media player oh it deleted my variable media player um, it's now saying take this create uh, this media player and connect it use the file C the mp3c over here so no errors there one more thing we got to do is say media player this variable that we have here media player start and there's other methods of course stop and but because the mp3 that I made is just a quick little mp3 um, just going like beep it doesn't need to stop it's just going to stop on its own now I'm going to copy and paste that into our green button but instead of saying um, C, I'll make it E, because that's the next highest note, even though it's not alphabetical. Then I'll copy and paste into blue. I'm going to use G. And then finally, A. Okay, I'm going to send that over to the phone. And do make sure that you do, um, if your MP3 is longer than, you know, a second or so, do make sure that you stop it. Otherwise, you'll you'll just eat up your battery life and your, your phone's resources. You could get your, your phone to lock up and freeze up, and that's just not fun. Let's see what happens when I click. Okay, and that's what we want. It would be great if um, we add some logic to give us challenges, you know, to each round or each level play a different... Um, pattern and we have to repeat that and it tells us if we're right or wrong. I'll leave that up to you. Uh, I was just giving you basic knowledge to get started, but the rest is up to you. Uh, make it into a game. Good luck.